Good evening, students. I am Sakshi Rura from Yaska Learning, and I will be taking your Python class. Now, last in the last class, we had an introduction about variables. Variables were used where we wanted to hold pieces of information. Remember? All right. So today we learn a few basic things more about variables. The first property that variables have are is that variables cannot start with numbers. So one favorite number, okay, one underscore favorite number equals to one. Now let us see if our Python console is able to work with this command. One favorite number equals to one. That says invalid decimal literal or it says a, it gives us a syntax error. Therefore, a variable cannot start with numbers. Variable should have the same styling. So if we label a variable favorite number, we assign the variable as one. And now if we want to print it using a capital letter. Let us see what does it mean here. Favorite number equals to one. Now if I call this variable, it gives us favorite number is not defined. That means your favorite number with the capital F is different from your favorite number with the small f. See, it gives us the desired output the value of that variable. Therefore, a variable cannot should always have the same styling. Now, it cannot have spaces. You must have seen when I write favorite number, I do not use space here. I am using an underscore. So our variables cannot have spaces in between them. A variable should always have a meaning. For example, if I name a variable, name equals Sakshi. All right, now I will not use favorite number equals to Sakshi. Okay, so our variable should always have a meaning so that our code also has a meaning. So that was all for the variables. Now let's move on to the data types or the number types, okay? Now, in the last lecture, we introduced the string data type. This time, I am going to introduce two different numeric types that are integers and floats. Okay, so integers, zero, positive, and negative whole numbers without fractional part. Okay, so integers are basically your whole numbers. So one, two, three, four, zero, all the negative numbers, these are all integers. What are floats? The positive and negative real numbers with a fractional part denoted by the decimal number, by the decimal symbol or the scientific notation E. Okay, what does it, what does this mean? So one, two, three, four point five, six, three decimal one, four, two or negative 1.55. So these are all examples of floating numbers. Okay, scientific notation is used as a short representation to express floats having many digits. What does this say here? Suppose we have three, four, five, six with one, two, three, four, five, six and eight numbers, eight zeros. How do we represent it? A shorter representation of this would be 3.456 small e and then 11. How does this calculate this number 11? We'll see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So after 11 spaces, we put a decimal mark and we write it. 3.456 and we replace the zeros. 
Okay, there's no need to write zeros here. E 11. Or instead of small e, you can also write a capital E. Similarly, 345.56789. How can we write this? Yes, we'll simply move this decimal two places here and we'll write three point the rest of the number and E two. Okay, that means we have moved the decimal two places. Now moving on to the arithmetic operators. Now what are operators? Does anybody know how to define operators? All right. So operators are the symbols or the keywords that represent an action. Okay. So for example, our operator here is a, is a plus sign which performs what action? The action of addition. So plus is our operator here. A and B are the operands. So what does the plus sign do? It adds operands on either side of the, of the operator. This is similar to how, do you, how you use in maths. Okay. So minus sign similarly subtracts this, the first number from the second number. The asterisk or the star sign, it multiplies the two numbers. The forward slash it divides the number, divides the left hand operand to the right hand operand. We'll one by one see how these work on the console also, okay? The modulus, it returns the remainder of the division of left hand operand by the right hand operand. So before we get to these three operators, let us quickly See what, how these four work. So if A equals one, B equals two, C equals A plus B, what should be the value of C here? Yes, C should give us three. Now, if I rename C as A, as B minus A. What should be the answer now? Yes, it should be one. Two minus one would be one. Let us rename C to A multiplied by B. And let us print the C. What should be the C now? Correct, it should be two. Now, if I divide B by A, so two divided by one should give us, correct, it should give us two. So this is how multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition works in Python. The next is the modulus. Now it says that it returns as the remainder. Okay, let us see what this is mean. So A is 21. If B is 10 and C is A mod B or A modulus B. Now your, what will be the remainder of 21 divided by 10? Yes, it will be one, all right? Now the next oper operator is the exponent. Okay, in mathematics, how do you write exponent? We write it using this symbol, right? Or we write it, how, what will this mean? C is A raised to power B. In mathematics, this means that C is A raised to power 
p all right so this exponential form is written using the double asterisk now the next it says if we give two forward slash that is flow division what does this give us the division of operands where the result is the quotient in which the digit digits after decimal point are removed that means your c equals a flow divide flow division b what will be your c your quotient okay so if the operand is negative the result is flowed that means it is rounded away from zero all right let us see how this works if a equals 9 b equals 2 and c equals a flow divided by b let us print c what will be the question here 2 fours are 8 so the question would be 4 and what will be the remainder here if c is a mod b what will be the remainder yes it will be 1 okay Does anybody have any doubt till here? All right, let's move forward. Now, the order of operation in Python is very important since it is different than the regular mathematical operation. Okay, the mathematical mathematical op order. So, in maths, you have board mass. Remember, B stands for Yeah. So D is division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. B is brackets, and O is O is the O stands for off, which is similar to multiplication. So in Python we have PEM does PEM does where P stands for parentheses, that means brackets. E stands for exponents. M D. Which is also written in capitals. That means they have the equal order or the equal priority. So multiplication and division. Okay, we'll know what is the meaning of the equal priority when we see an example. Then A S A S stands for addition and subtraction. All right. So in your expression, the division is done before multi. Um, okay, let us do this using an example. So if we have ten minus seven, flow division two, multiplied by three plus one. Okay. Now quickly solve it, and what do you think should be the output here? Okay, let us try using. The concept. So ten minus seven floor division two multiplied by three plus one. The answer is two. Let us see how has it solved it. So PEMDAS stands for parentheses. We do not have any brackets here. E stands for exponential. There is no exponent here. Now M D. That means it. What does the order of precedence means? That first of all, the Python sees the seven divide uh, flow division two. So what was flow division? The quotient. So seven divided by two. Two three is a six. So a quotient would be three. All right, and then the next that it sees is multiplication. So three into three is nine. Now, ten minus nine plus one. So that is your equation till now. 
Now the first thing that the python now sees is 10 minus 9 which is 1. 1 plus 1 would be 2. So that is how it has solved it. Okay. So division and multiplication are executed first. Multiplication and division fall in the same group, not a set order here. Okay. So 7 divided by 2 is executed first, followed by the multiplication. You then get the subtraction from 10 and then addition of 1 and the end. Now what are comparison operators? The comparison operators return a boolean type of an answer that means what are booleans true or false so the different types of comparison operators are these now these hold very important hold very much importance in python because these are basically the decision makers in our codes all right so this is this stands for greater than true if the left left operand is higher than the right one so if x is greater than y. It says x is 10 here, y is 20. If x is greater than y, that means 10 is greater than 20. So our answer should be false. Then the next is less than. If 10 is less than 20, that means true. If 10 equals to 20. Now see, we, for equal, we have used two equal to signs, okay? Why have we used two equal to signs here? Yes, so the single equal to sign was our assignment operator and the double equal to sign is our comparison operator, okay? So if 10 equals to 20, so it is false, right? Now, this symbol, the exclamation mark means not, okay? So not equal to, this symbol means not equal. If 10 is not equal to 20, so that is right, right? So it, give, it will give us true. If 10 is greater than or equal to, okay? Greater than or equal to. So this is similar to greater than or equal to. So 10 is greater than or equal to 20. So this will also give us false. If 10 is less than or equal to 20. So 10 is less than or equal to 20. That will give us true because 10 is less than 20. So the next are logical operators. Now logical operators also give us the boolean values and they compare the different two different boolean values. What does that mean here? X and Y. So 10 and 20. Okay. Now and is used when both of the sides are true. That means both are comparable. So 10 and 20. So it should give us false. Okay. Now x and y here are boolean. So 10 and 20 won't work here. Now x is true and y is false. So true and false. Both are not true, right? Therefore, our answer is false. Or operator is used. It will give us true if at least one of both these expressions is true. So true or false, x or y. So that will give us true, not. Not will return as true if an expression evaluates to false. What does this mean? Not x, that means not true. It will give us false. That means it will work in the opposite direction, not true. Not true is false. So anything that is not true will be false. If it would have been not y here, what would be the output? Yes, 
not five. That means not false. The output should be true. Now let us quickly do few exercises. The first, in the first exercise, I want you to write a program to add two numbers. So write to write a program to add two numbers. Okay. So I'll show you how my program looks like. So I've added a comment here, this program, I'm sorry for the typo. Yeah. So this program gives the sum of two numbers, number one. Now this function you use if you wish to write an input for the user. Okay, we'll see how this works when we'll run this code. So here we are converting our input to integer type integer data type, please type your first number, the number two, please type your second number, the sum, what, will, what is the sum of the two numbers? Number one plus number two. And then this function, using the print function, I'm printing the sum of your numbers is and here I'm converting my sum, which is an integer here. Okay, remember we converted our input to integers. So our sum will also be an integer. You can only add an integer to an integer. You cannot add an integer to your string. So this is a string character and this is integer, which is why we are converting our integer into a string using this function here. So let us run this code. Okay, please type your first number three. Please type your second number five. See how quickly Python gives us the sum. The sum of your numbers is eight. Okay, the next exercise I want you to write a program to calculate area of a circle. What is the area of a circle? It is 3.14 radius square pi r square, right? So pi is 3.14, r is the radius and square. Okay. Area of a circle. So this program calculates area of a circle. R is the radius integer input. Please enter the radius of the circle. The area will be calculated by the value of pi is 3.14 asterisk. That means multiply R is our integer input radius double stars that mean double double asterisk which stands for exponential two so this is pi r square 3.4 3.14 r square print the area of the circle is similarly now area here i'm converting my area which is a integer type into a string data type let us run this code Please enter the radius of the circle. Let us say 10. The area of the circle is 314 point. Okay. The next, I want you to write a program to calculate area of a room. What is the area of a room? A room is a, it could be a cuboid or it could be a rectangular, right? But here they have written height, width and length is 10. That means all the sides are equal, which means it will be a cube. So area of a room is height into width into, into length. Okay. So how will you write this code? Height 
height h that h stands for height please enter the height of the room w stands for width please enter the width of the room l stands for length please enter the length of the room area would be h multiplied by w multiplied by l that means the area of the room is again we are converting the integer into the string let us run this code height of the room is 10 width of the room is 10 length of the room is 10 so the area of the room is 1000 all right okay so that was all for today's lecture today we learned what are the two data types the other two data types integers and floats we learned the different arithmetic operators we have also learned the different comparison and logical operators all right and we have also learned that strings cannot be added to integers so that was all for today thank you